Dr. Mason and I are here today to talk about upcoming plans for Oak Forest Hospital. In light of the May 12th decision by the Illinois Health Facilities and Service Review Board, beginning today, Oak Forest Hospital will begin a process of modified operations. To give us more information about that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Terry Mason, who is acting chief executive officer of our health care system. First of all, let me say that we want to stress for almost all of our patients that would normally use Oak Forest Hospital, there will be no change in how they receive their health care with respect to the emergency room. It will still be open 24-7, and we will be accepting patients in the emergency room there. However, for that small percentage of patients who may require inpatient care, they will be transferred at our expense to a nearby facility or Stroger Hospital or Provident Hospital. We are also suspending the intensive care unit, acute rehab, surgery, and long-term care during this time. Our current four long-term care patients will move into the medical surgical unit at Oak Forest Hospital. To help alleviate some of the strain on our emergency department, we are adding a clinic adjacent to the emergency room, which will be open from 11 a.m. until 11 p.m. We will use that to funnel our less severe patients and patients looking for prescription refills. We anticipate that more than half of our emergency department patients will be able to use that new clinic as opposed to waiting in our emergency room. I also want to be clear that there's a cost to all of this. We anticipate by not being able to close inpatient care, we are looking at at least a $2 million a month dollar figure to run Oak Forest Hospital that is currently not budgeted. It is money that will have to come from somewhere else, either in the system or for the county. It could mean fewer services in another community or closing other community clinics. We don't see this as a permanent solution, however, and we still want to pursue the option of a regional outpatient center at Oak Forest. We plan on resubmitting our proposal in the near future and have made a few changes to the plan, including a 24-hour urgent care center to the proposal to make sure our patients always have access to care. The plan to transform Oak Forest into a regional outpatient center was submitted to the Illinois Health Facilities and Service Review Board for approval. The plan was denied on May 12, 2011. Currently, the nine-member board has three vacancies and two members sitting on expired terms. In order to win approval, our action would have required five votes. Five of the six members were present. Four of them voted for the proposal, one against. We got an 80 percent vote, but not enough. We needed five votes, and we had four. I have discussed the importance of filling these vacancies with the governor repeatedly, beginning as early as January, and I submitted recommendations for appointments. Despite the board's decision, I remain committed to implementation of the Vision 2015 Strategic Plan for our health and hospital system. The transition of Oak Forest Hospital to a regional health center at Oak Forest allows the facility to expand its services and add primary care doctors and specialists to better serve the people of the south suburb. On a broader level, these changes contribute to the sustainability of our county's health and hospital system. The Cook County Health and Hospital System will resubmit a proposal to the board that will include provisions for a 24-7 urgent care center loca located at the Ork Forest Hospital. The original idea was to have an urgent care center that was open from 7 in the morning till 11 at night. But as we spoke to community residents, leaders, and clergy from the Southland, it became apparent that it was very important to the community to have this facility open 24 hours. And through the good work of Dr. Mason talking with his staff and finance people, we were able to find a way to plan to have that urgent care center open 24, 24 hours a day. 
You know, I've always said as a public official that you have two obligations. One is to do the right thing, and the second is to make sure that people understand that you're doing the right thing, to persuade them. And quite frankly, our healthcare system has done an abysmal job of explaining a strategic plan to the public and winning support for it. After the Democratic primary, I sat down with Bill Foley and Warren Batts and told them point blank, you aren't communicating very well. <coughs> there wasn't much outreach to stakeholders, to local elected officials, to community leaders, to clergy. I had staff attend the town hall meetings that were designed to explain to the public the strategic plan and to, in, to uh, secure their input and comments. And what I was told was, frankly, that they were uh, abysmally ineffective. It's very hard to change a system as we're proposing to change our health and hospital system without community support. And we didn't secure the, the community support that we desperately needed uh, as we began to implement our strategic plan. We have to do a better job of reaching out to communities, not just in the Southland, but across the county, and engaging them in a dialogue that will help not only improve our plans, but um, gain support for them as well. So I, I, I have to be clear, I'm a strong supporter of independent governance of our health care sy system. I'm a very strong supporter. But I have to point out that there are ways in which our health care system frankly failed to make the case for the new changes that it was instituting and for its strategic vision for 2012, 2015. And let me just say, um, since Terry Mason is standing here with me, that Terry Mason has been on the job for three weeks. And my conversations with the leadership, both of the independent governing board and with the chief executive office, officer, did not include him because he wasn't in his job then. So what I'm talking about is his predecessor and the independent governing board, and as I said, what I believe is their failure to effectively communicate their plans to the public. In addition, we now have a problem that's related to finances. So we've got two issues on the table related to our independent governing board. One is communication, and <coughs> the second is finances. We just spent an hour, we just spent more than an hour at, at, in the board meeting uh, talking about our finances and the financial report that was prepared uh, for the period ending April 30. And our health care system is down almost $41 million um, below projected uh, revenues. And, and this is a problem not just for the health care system but for our county. And this is only after five months they're down 40, 41 million, almost $41 million. So it's, it's, and it's hard to anticipate what the figure is going to be at the end of the fiscal year. So we, we're facing some real challenges in securing support for the plan that, we, um, that we're implementing, and we're facing a financial challenge as we look at uh, patient revenues. The board decided today that they would, uh, we would send, as I would send as president, and they would sign uh, a letter to the governor asking him for expedition in processing our backlog of Medicaid uh, patient applications, applications for people to be, uh, to be made eligible for Medicaid reimbursement. This is a real problem for our health and hospital system. And Bill Ayers, who's the um, uh, chief financial officer, Michael Ayers, who's our chief financial officer, uh, said that, that there's about $38 million out there that we could, we could um, expect reimbursement for if we can make sure that the patients are eligible. So we've got some tough challenges ahead of us. Um, I know Terry from his work in the city. I have great confidence in him. Um, we're, we're looking at a real challenge, both of us.